we talk of the importance today of a good attitude. We think of it, however, largely as a platitude. We have the feeling that if we have a good attitude, other people will like us better, that we will be more popular. This is no doubt true. But is this friendship that results from better attitude merely based upon this external situation, or is it based upon the change in the magnetic field which can be intuitively recognized by others? We know that persons of various temperaments have had adventures in life which would signify or indicate that their internal natures affected those around them. It is a common problem, for example, that does not infrequently arise, uh, that certain physicians and nurses uh, have better effects upon patients than others. This effect cannot be based upon appearance, for one may be as prepossessing as another. It cannot be based upon efficiency. They have all received more or less equal training. We may say that it could be based upon the attitude of the doctor or the nurse. But in some instances, they are at least certainly not aware of their attitude and are very hurt and disappointed when the patient does not respond favorably. Yet it is almost a certainty that if we leave a certain nurse with a certain patient, he may not recover. Something is wrong that cannot be corrected by efficiency, kindness, cheerfulness, or anything that we know. There seems to be an, antagonized, an antagonism on the level of the magnetic field. Thus, certain persons in all relationships can be fortunate or unfortunate in terms of their own magnetism. Does this mean that such magne magnetic attractions and repulsions are inevitable? Does it mean that certain persons will never be able to get along together? Does this to a certain degree reflect itself in the comparatively high rate of divorce from which we suffer today? is incompatibility, at least in part, an element of magnetism. I think it can be in a good many cases. There are also indications that there are people who cannot get along together, who will not be able to, or will never be able to make a sufficiently great adjustment in their own characters that they will be able to become compatible. Uh, this occurs not only in the more intimate associations, but also in business and in social activity. There are people that will never be drawn to each other. And if they are accidentally brought together, there is no spark of friendship or recognition. There is only, at best, an indifference. Now, the problem of indifference also plays a part in our magnetic theory. Energy moves with interest. It moves with concern. It moves with all kinds of active attitudes. It does not move, however, from indifference. Indifference is the ultimate degree of detachment. It means that there is no sympathy, no relationship, no common ground. It does not necessarily stand for an antagonism in the magnetic fields, but it very often prevents any interest or direction of energy by means of which an acquaintance or an association can be improved. Now, in uh, religion, mysticism, philosophy, and these situations, indifference has never been regarded as a virtue. And when we refer to a certain kind, shall we say, of detachment, we do not imply indifference. Indifference is 
so completely lifeless that it calls and draws nothing. And quietude, or the suspension of attitudes, <coughs> is not indifference. Indifference represents failure to report any stimulation or any uh, activity of interest. Whereas man seeking to relax or to attain freedom from pressure is not working with indifference. Uh, to uh, make a virtue of indifference would be equivalent to making a virtue of ignorance or to assume that a not knowing is good. In nature, not knowing is never good. False knowing is also bad. Right knowing is very important. Indifference is not relaxation. Indifference is not protection. And the individual who becomes indifferent or attempts to get out of a situation by departing from it physically and psychologically uh, will gain little benefit for himself. Rather than indifference, there must be a strong, but perhaps rather impersonal, sense of values. Again, this term is a little dangerous, for the impersonal individual may be without sympathies, and sympathy is the principle upon which magnetism moves. Therefore, detachment must not and should not be unsympathetic. It becomes, therefore, necessary to refine and regulate values to the end that we hold the proper attitude toward ourselves and to all other creatures. That this attitude cannot be assumed merely by an action of the will or a determination of the mind is also evident. The attitude must become a total part of the life itself. The attitude must arise in consciousness and be communicated therefrom directly into the fields of energy which support the body. Researches by Mesmer and others have shown beyond doubt that the magnetic field to operate best must be in a state of tranquility. Tranquility simply means now normalcy, nothing more than or less. Excitation or the tremendous upsurge of intensity is not normal. Depression or the reduction of energy to the state perhaps of inertia is not normal. And one of the forces or circumstances which causes the greatest havoc in man's uh, magnetic structure is uncontrolled and excessive emotional outbursts. These cannot do any good on any plane, and on the psychic plane they do much harm.